So Julie, why has the connection between the immune system and the brain, compared to other organs or systems, been so mysterious until recently? So, yes, because until recently we thought that the interaction between the brain and the immune system would only occur in the presence or in the context of disease. So like after infection or in the context of neuroimmune or autoimmune disorders, such as multiple sclerosis. And in the absence of such disease, the brain was seen as an immune privileged organ, meaning that it would be completely shielded by the blood-brain barrier and just completely hermetic to the peripheral immune system. So basically that was a, the current view in the field for many years. But new studies have been completely revisiting this concept and now they reveal the presence of uh, lymphatic vessels in the meninges that would own the immune system at steady state, so in the absence of disease. And this is really important because it suggests that uh, Actually, the brain and the immune system do constantly communicate, even when we're not sick. And that it could also suggest that uh, the immune system could impact on neurophysiology, so a normal uh, brain function, and that could impact on our daily behavior. So, can you summarize the main findings of our study? Yes, our study is a good illustration of this neuroimmune uh, interaction at steady state. We found that an uh, immune uh, inflammatory molecule, which is IR-17, is produced by a specific subset of immune cells in the meninges, which are the gamma delta T cells. And we show that this promotes the process of learning and memory. So for this, we tested the cognitive performance of mice in specific mazes that are commonly used in neuroscience. And we showed that mice deficient for gamma delta T cells or for IR-17 actually display uh, impaired short-term memory. What is short-term memory? So short-term memory is basically the memory that you would display in a very short-term uh, period. For example, you could remember what you had for lunch um, today, but mostly you won't remember what you had lunch like one week ago. And uh, mechanistically, how does this work? So we showed that the R17 in the meninges would promote uh, the secretion of neurotransmitters and would help to maintain an optimal uh, signaling of the neuronal network in the hippocampus, which is the brain part responsible for this learning and memory process. And why do you think these findings were surprising? So when we started this project, we were actually looking for gamma delta T cells to have a pro-cognitive role in the brain. We actually thought, based on previous literature on other T cells being helping the mouse, in this case the model being used to learn, we thought gamma delta cells would be pro-cognitive. What was very surprising was that the molecule they are producing, the molecule they secrete to endow cognition, is actually IL-17, because IL-17 was clearly established as a very inflammatory cytokine boosting diseases like multiple sclerosis, so a disease where our T cells, autoimmune T cells, attack the myelin sheets of neurons. And so to have the same molecule now being protective, or at least beneficial to the host, guaranteeing proper short-term learning was actually very surprising to us. And how do you think we can take advantage of these findings to, for future therapy of neurodegenerative disease? So for learning itself, we don't think we need a therapy as such. What will be important is to know what are the factors that regulate these basal levels of IL-17 that are important for cognition so that we can, for instance, through diet, because you've realized that vitamins can regulate this process, guarantee that all of us, expecting that these findings in mice are translatable to humans, that all of us can have enough IL-17 in our brains, in our meninges, to guarantee proper short-term learning. But what will be critical is to understand how these levels of IL-17, if dysregulated, if it exacerbated, like in the case of MS, but now in the case of other diseases, such as neurodegenerative diseases, might actually be very pathogenic and therefore a new target for immunotherapy.